This is a brief introduction to the basic data types and typing and expressions in a programming language called Python. You can get Python for your computer from python.org. Just bring up a browser, go to this website here, click on the download link, and then scroll down to find a version that's appropriate for your computer. This video is based upon version 3.2.2, which is the latest version as of now. So what we're looking at here is uh, the Python shell called idle. When you launch Python, you'll run, run an application called IDLE. And this is where you can just type in some Python expressions or uh, statements and just see what happens. Uh, basically, it's a glorified calculator. So for the, the basic data types like numbers, it uses all the same arithmetic operations that you're already familiar with, like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. We'll just type some stuff in and see what happens. So 10 plus 78, 88. We can multiply some numbers together. 6 times 7 times 8. And we get 336. You can put some spaces in there too if you want to make it a little prettier. 6 times 7 times 8. And you see you get exactly the same thing. Division, 37 divided by 5. We get 7.4, just like you'd expect on a regular calculator. Uh, Python also knows about a different kind of division. This is integer division. That's done with two slashes. 37 slash slash 5 is the result of dividing 37 by 5 and then throwing away the decimal portion. So we get just the integer portion. We can also do exponents, like 3 to the fourth power is done with two multiplication symbols. We get 81. We can do much larger calculations, like 123 to the 456th power. Gives us a nice big, big, big number. Don't, don't be afraid of using big numbers in Python. It handles them just fine. So we can do like uh, 1, 2, 3, let's see, uh, 4, 5, 6, 2. We get, oh, that's not what I wanted. There we go, 4, 5, 6, 2. Oh, nice big number. <laughs> don't worry about that. Handles it just fine. Look at that. That is a big number. Uh, there's another calculation you should probably know about, and that's modulo. So we do 37% 5. This is the result of dividing 37 by 5 and then giving us just the remainder. So normally we had 7 before as the quotient. Now we get uh, the remainder of 2. Now when you mix operations together, you need to know about the order of operations. It follows exactly the same rules that you learned in math. Uh, you may have learned it as a PEM, DOS, or something like that. The powers, or excuse me, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Python follows all the same rules like that. So 2 plus 3 times 4 is going to multiply the 3 times 4 first and then add the 2, giving us a result of 14. We can force it to add 2 and 3 together first by putting it in parentheses. And now we get 20. So now that we have this calculator, what can we do with it? Let's say you're at a restaurant and you've just finished a meal and the waiter has just brought you a check for $12.83 and you want to calculate a tip of 15%. Now of course you, you whip out your laptop or your computer and you uh, use it to fire up idle and you use it to make the calculation. So 12.83 is the cost of the meal, and you're going to multiply by 0.15, and we see we should leave a tip of about $1.92 or so. Maybe you'll round up to $2 and be nice to the waiter. Uh, um, here's one from your math class. Let's say you've got a triangle. The base is 3, the height is 5, and you want to know what the area is. So if you think back, the formula for finding a triangle area is base times height divided by 2, or another way to put it is 1 half the base times height. So if we have a base of 3, height of 5, and then we divide by 2, we get 7.5 as the area of that triangle. Here's one for you computer programmers. You want to know, uh, you've got a 32-bit integer, 32-bit quantity, and you want to know how many possible numbers are there. So that answer to that is 2 to the 32nd power. We get a number of about 4.3 billion. How about this? Uh, you want to know what is the largest 32-bit signed number? 
So this would be the largest number that a language like Java or C can represent in an int. And that is 2 to the 31st power minus 1. And that's about 2.1 billion or so. So those are the basic numbers. You know about addition, subtraction, exponent, multiplication, division, remainder, and integer division. Let's move on now to comparisons. We can ask Python questions like, is 3 less than 5? And it says, true, 3 is less than 5. How about, is 10 greater than 20? It says, that's not true, that's false. How about, uh, is 3 less than 5 or 10 greater than 20? Now this one is true because although it is false that 10 is greater than 20, it is true that 3 is less than 5. And so uh, if you have something that's true or false, the answer is true. So that's uh, comparisons. We have less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Uh, equality is done with two equal signs, and inequality is uh, exclamation mark and equal sign. So if we do something like, is, is 5 not equal to 10? That's true. So those are comparisons. Uh, the last thing I'll leave you with is variables. This allows us to assign a quantity, like the number 10, to uh, a name, give it a name. So for example, I've got a dog, and he's 8 years old. And so I can say that my dog's age is equal to 8. So this assigns the value of 8 to the variable called age. So this is not uh, asking a question. Remember, that was two equal signs. This is assigning the value of 8 to the value of age. And then we can ask it, what's the value of age? Just type in age, and it says 8. Now, so my dog is 8. How old is that in human years? You probably know that there's some silly calculation where you can multiply a dog's age by 7 and get its equivalent age in human, human years. So we'll go age times 7, and it turns out he's 56 in human equivalent years. We can do comparisons with those variables as well, like is age less than 18? Mm, yes it is. Is age equal to 10? Nope, it's not. How about is age times 7 greater than or equal to 50? Yes it is, because it, it takes age multiplies it by 7, so you get 56. And you're really asking the question, is 56 greater than or equal to 50? And then finally, here's that same triangle example we did a few moments ago. This time we'll use variables instead of the actual numbers. Uh, we'll say that the base of the triangle is 3, the height of the triangle is 5, and we want to know what the area is, and that calculation is base times height divided by 2. 7.5. Um, you could also do it as base times height times uh, 1 divided by 2. So this would be essentially half the base times height. We could do it another way. Same answer, no matter how you do it there. And then uh, instead of just doing that calculation, we could take that calculation and put the result of that into a variable. So we could say something like area is equal to one half times the base times the height. And then ask it, what's the value of area? And it says 7.5, of course. So that's the basics of Python expressions with numbers. We did the calculations with the basic operations, plus we had some comparisons. See my other videos to learn more about the other data types, such as strings, arrays, tuples, sets, and also learn about how to define your own functions so that instead of typing in a calculation here, we can just uh, um, uh, call a function by name, give it some inputs, and it comes up with the answer. Thanks for watching.